Jimmy Fallon came to be the head coach of the Huskies. Coach Fallon had many successful years. Quarter of the end zone where Mark Patterson makes the catch with just 34 seconds to go. Paul, great time! Yes! Chris Paul get to the end zone! Touchdown, Washington! Sopo with room inside the 20. He should go. Touchdown, Huskies. We're sitting in the press box and we're thinking, oh my God, is this guy going to go for three and two? Is this guy going to really do something that nobody else has done in the history of college football? And the numbers just went up and up and up and up. Those type of games are once every 30 or 40 years. They're not even once every 10 years. Those don't come along too often. Uh, I just I remember watching thinking, this guy is a tremendous athlete. Looking in zone for Harris, touchdown! If there ever was a player to build a team around, it was quarterback Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. The son of Seattle Seahawks star Manu Tuiasa Sopo, Marcus landed at the UW after a standout local high school career. Around junior high and high school, I started really liking the Huskies and the toughness that they brought. and, and uh, their attitude and their mentality that they played with. As far as being a quarterback for the Huskies, you know, I felt a big responsibility. I didn't want to be the guy that, that let the level or standard of play slip. And so I would watch old films and, and watch guys like Mark Brunel, and Billy Joe, and Damon Heard, and you know, watch Brock Heard for, for two years and say, hey, I'm going to uphold the standard of play here. And you know, that, that was a personal goal of mine. Standing at six foot two, weighing 225 pounds, Marcus Tuiasasopo was the whole package. And his name was never said more times in four quarters of football than in the game against Stanford in Husky Stadium on October 10th, 1999. This in essence was the Pac-10 showdown. It was a conference championship because, because if Washington beats Stanford, both teams will have one loss. Washington has the tiebreak. So they're playing for all intents and purposes for the conference championship. Do you think that Marcus Tuiasasopo is going to be called on even more to make key decisions today? And they'll see it firsthand right here with Marcus. Nobody open downfield, takes up on the run, and that's where he's a real threat. In that 99 season, the Huskies ran an option offense. And when one of the options is Marcus Tuiasasopo, well, you have a weapon that is anything but a secret. And for whatever reason, we, we weren't clicking on all cylinders in the passing game. And, we needed a way to just develop some more offense and you know get some explosive plays to keep you know our drives going. The offensive coaching staff they, they knew that Pat and I had run what we, what they called a Veer offense in high school, and they just brought us in and asked, hey, would you guys be willing to do that here? Um, and we said, sure. We just you know, we want the team to win. We'll do it. We know how to do it. So if you put it in, uh, we, you know that won't be any anything for us to to pick up in a week, which we did. When we got to the Stanford game that season, they, they played a lot of what they call an over front. We could down block with the tackle, we could pull our guard around, block the end with our tight end, and the, the, the front, they're going to think it's a run, because they're used to that if you hand it off to the running back. Now if you do it in an option form where you let the quarterback keep the ball and then you take the running back and be his pitch man, that's a little different for them. They're not thinking that play, and so we kind of caught them off guard there. And, we were able to pull the guard around to hit their sandbacker, and we'll just option the next guy outside, which is either going to be the corner or the safety, and how they decide to play it. It was a big play for us in that Stanford game. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo at quarterback. In their first possession, the Huskies go on the attack. Drawing on first down and a completion to Joe Jarzinka. That is his first catch of the year. And on the very next play, the Stanford defense dials up the heat. On the rollout, man in his face, drops it into the arms of Dane Looker. Marcus took a shot that time, but completed a nice touch pass. He does it for the team, sacrifices his body. I'm sure Coach Neuheisel and the rest of the staff don't want him doing that too much this afternoon. In the opening moments of the game, Tuiasa Sopo is visibly hurt. Yeah, I was just rolling out, you know, simple rollout that we've done all season. I had to hold the ball a little bit longer than I wanted to to buy some time, let the receiver win, and he did, and I threw it, and I got hit uh, as soon as I threw it. And then the next end, I'm landing on the turf, and all of a sudden, I just feel like warmth going all around my hip, and then also, you know, down, you know, my thigh, my left leg. And, uh, you know, it was just a big bruise and a hip pointer, and, 
you know, you, you're not sure how bad it is right after the play. You just kind of move around and shake your leg a little bit and keep going. And, uh, you know, then I, as the game went on, the next, like, series, you know, you, well, it was pretty bad. You know, it started getting real stiff, and I, you know, wasn't able to move. And, and so that was, it was pretty interesting. We watched Marcus Tuiasosopo again favoring that leg a little bit. Marcus had been just uh, impervious to injury, so we all thought uh, uh, this guy's going to live forever and play forever, and he just doesn't get hurt. He took a shot to the backside early in that ball game uh, that uh, the, the trainers will tell you was a very nasty looking injury. And a third down here for Washington. Blitz picked up nicely. Tuiasosopo throws intercepted. There's also a flag as he really put that one up for grabs, trying to avoid the sack. And Sonny, that's just one you can't afford to make. You throw it away instead, maybe, but Tim Smith got the pick. While Tuyasa Sopo is being treated, Stanford shows how an undefeated Pac-10 team plays football. First and goal for the Cardinal. Wire once again. Runs over a defender and into the end zone for the Stanford score. Stanford takes an early 7-0 lead, and Tui waits his turn on the sidelines. And he just kept on grinding, kept on grinding, kept on grinding, and it just, it was like infectious. Just the single-minded focus of winning, you could just feel it from him, and I think his teammates did too. Sopo got evaluated a little bit by the trainers. J.K. Yeah. Scott's been warming up, Sonny. Yeah, he has, Todd. He took that hard hit on that hip, and only the game will dictate if he can go on. Marcus was the toughest guy that I've ever seen at that spot, and he wanted to win more. You know, it just, the look in his eyes, you could just see it through his helmet where he would just, I mean, the just the single-minded focus of winning. You could just feel it from him, and I think his teammates did too. The two times that I've actually had to sit out for periods of a game have been to, due to hit pointers. So I know how bad that hurt when he got hit. And, you know, it's one of those things where Marcus is that guy, like a lot of other guys that I've encountered here, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he took a hit pointer. His adrenaline's pumping. You know, your blood is flowing. You're, you're, you're pumping. It does not matter. You know, we're here to win, we're here to play hard, and, and he just kept on grinding, kept on grinding, kept on grinding, and it just, it was like infectious. We watched Marcus Tuiasosopo again favoring that leg a little bit as he comes out. Tui cranks up the offense on the next drive. Tuiasosopo has the corner and more. Sonny, it's just what you talked about going into the game as Folk chases him out of bounds. Well, you can tell right there that that hip slowed him down just a little bit, but still he looked pretty good. After the trainers were looking at him, you didn't know if he was going to come back on the field. Jarzinka in again on this third down. Looked like they got him to jump. Yes, flags have gone. Plenty of time for Tui. Now he has the corner. Strikes to Elstrom. Very close to first down yardage once again. At one, they're not going to get it off. Well, no flag. Draw for Tui Asasopo. Inside the 35, he'll be short of the first down. They might have gotten away with that one. Very close. The Husky drive stalls, but a 50-yard field goal attempt puts points on the board. Appears to be into a little bit of a breeze. And got it. That's why you go to Florida and get a good kicker in situations <laughs> like that. Then it's Stanford's turn on their next possession. Looking at a reverse fake here. Cusack going long for Walters. He's open. Touchdown, Stanford. A little flim flam to give him time to run that deep drag route, Sonny, but he beat the secondary. I tell you, Troy Walters was open all the way. Good little razzle dazzle in the backfield, hoping to confuse the safeties. You see Akbar right there say, wait a minute, where was my help on that play? Stanford increases their lead to 14 to three in the first quarter. Well, there's some noise. The Cardinal offense goes nowhere in their next series, and the Husky D steps up. Blitz, under pressure, throws it away. Flag thrown for grounding. Issa and Towns there. That's something these fans have been waiting to see. Jarzinka back inside of midfield. Stanford is forced to punt. Tolpenrude a wobbly kick. 
Jarzinka at the 45, stripped of it, Stanford ball. He, I think, took his eyes off it because one defender and the blocking man were there, and he allowed Ryan Fernandez to strip him and fall on the ball. I know that Rick Neuheisel is sitting there talking to Joe right now. A golden opportunity just slips through when you make those kind of mental errors. The Husky defense is right back on the field. They give Stanford a big break, and they try to go home run ball again. Oh, my God. Intercepted. Holy <laughs> cow, Bontour. Check him for glue. Whoa. We change his last name to Velcro. Well, you know, Lester Hayes has been playing the pro game in a long time. But that was a heck of an interception that time with Von Chur, who leads the Huskies, as you see right there, Todd. Boy, what a turnaround right here. He is not 100%. Smart read, first down. Smith drags him down outside the 30, and Marcus, you can see him wins as he gets back up once again. He starts to make these plays where he makes a guy miss and it should have been a sack and a loss of five or six yards and he turns it into a 15 yard gain. And you just start to believe that we can do it and we can make things happen. Boy, he is not 100%. At the 32 a turnover line. opportunity now and it's all Tui all the time. Under some pressure, now finds Stevens out to midfield and another first down. Hauled down from behind that time by Stockbauer, the inside linebacker. Cuts it back, smart read, first down. Smith drags him down outside the 30, and Marcus, you can see him wince as he gets back up once again. Boy, <laughs> talk about tough. We have seen so many games this year with Tuyasa Sopo and running the ball, throwing the ball with a smile on his face. And right now, you know this young man's fighting through it with a lot of courage, landing hard on that same hip where he was smashed to the ground by Steen earlier in the ball game. To Anderson on to attempt another field goal. Is the Husky first. drive stalls, and they take a three. Breakdowns, Milicic the holder. This one just outside the 30, so it'll be a 40 or 41 yarder, and he's dead solid with that one. Stanford still leads 14 to 6 in the second quarter. On the next Husky possession, Tuiasa Sopo picks up right where he left off. Off the play action to Shaw with time. Open is Harris. Makes a great catch at the 45 yard line. Under some pressure. Now we'll scramble, and there's tons of room for Tuiasa Sopo. Nearly broke one more, and then they go for his head. Fought wraps him up inside the 25, and it'll be a big first down for Washington. Again, getting the playoff just in time. Looking end zone for Harris. Touchdown. Yes, he held on. Beat Smith that time. Gerald Harris, third touchdown catch of the year. See, Tuiasa Sopo, he's excited about that throw, and he should be. The Huskies go for two, but come up short. Tui battling, the ball scored free, short anyway. Still, a huge drive has Stanford clinging to a two-point lead. As the first half winds down, Stanford is back on the attack. Breaks Akbar's tackle, and he's off to the races. Did, did he? Yes. They finally say he stepped out of bounds at the 16-yard line. He thought he was into the end zone, and a third and goal for the Stanford Cardinal. The Husky defense makes a goal line stand. Wire, he'll be stopped short. And holds Stanford to three. And drives it through. He's been banged up, he's been bruised, but he's had a pretty good first half. At the end of the first half, the Huskies head to the locker room, down 17 to 12. I, I think it was the 77 season, 78 Rose Bowl, I believe, is when Mike Lude and, and some of the uh, Thai Sports Council came up with the idea that we needed to come up with this, this car to take down to the Rose Parade.
The Husky faithful knew the dogs would have to put up points in bunches in the second half, and that would mean that the Husky helmet car would be doing laps around the field. I, I think it was the 77 season, 78 Rose Bowl, I believe, is when Mike Lude and, and some of the uh, Thai Sports Council came up with the idea that we needed to come up with this, this car to take down to the Rose Parade. The Huskies return home to play Michigan. It's the Wolverines' first appearance in Seattle since 1970. It's such an icon at Husky football games. The tradition is that it, it always goes around the track after every touchdown. It's kind of sad to think that that's a tradition that might die, but I'm sh we're still going to have it at the game uh, so people can take pictures of what their families at. It's certainly a picture day and, and things like that. There's just no room to, to take it around the stadium anymore on, on touchdowns, unfortunately. At the beginning of the second half, Tui Asasopo has already racked up impressive passing and rushing numbers. That was a Tyrone Willingham Stanford team, very physical team. Uh, that was a good team that he was doing this against. And uh, to, to put up those kinds of numbers, I mean, Marcus was obviously the, the linchpin of Washington's offense. The Huskies begin their first drive of the second half. His knee did not go down, he's still good. And there's room. Stanford coaches are saying he went down, but I think we'll get to see Marcus got a hand down, and as long as your knee doesn't touch, you're still good. Absolutely, with his athleticism, they, not too many quarterbacks can do that, but he can do that. They barely get the handoff off the Hurst. Sure. The dog drive self-destructs on a fumble, and the Cardinal go on offense. Looking for Pitts, oh, he was wide open down the seam, and he'll get into the end zone for the score. In a matter of moments, Stanford drives for yet another touchdown, and they extend their lead to 23-12 over the Dogs. On the next kickoff, the Huskies botch the return and end up at their own one-yard line. Where will they spot him? Inside the one-yard line. Who do you call on when you need to drive 99 yards? Marcus Tuiasa Sopa. Crowd yelling, but they got it off before the zero mark this time, and Tui will take it for big yardage. Wise move there as he lets himself be escorted out of bounds. So he also Sopo with room inside the 20. He should go. Touchdown Huskies. Hobbled and all. He takes it in. It's over 150 yards rushing. Dad likes it. It's his fourth touchdown rushing of the year. The Huskies narrow the score. Now they're down 23 to 19. I mean, that was typical of Marcus and just being able to find a way to, to always, you know, whatever the defense was doing that day, he'd figure out a way to make it work. But that was a good Stanford team that had a, that had a very good offense. And so the Huskies needed every, every yard that Marcus got that day to be able to pull that game out. Stanford fails to capitalize on their next drive, and the Huskies are back on the attack. Off the play action, open is Stevens, the tight end into Stanford territory. The Huskies put up three more on the board, and now they're just one point behind Stanford. And he read the break. On their next possession, Stanford buckles under, under the Husky pressure. defense. Chased from behind and dropped. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, the Husky offense has racked up more yards than in any game this season, and there's still 15 minutes to go. We're looking at records, we're, we're crossing names off the list, we're getting to territory that nobody's ever even been a part of. Staring at the goal line, Tuiasa Sopo has already set a school record for total offense. Marcus pulls it back inside. He'll score! I wanted to make the pass quarterbacks proud and every, every Husky football player in the past proud of the way I play. And I think our team did that. And that was our, our main focus because we, we wanted to go out and be tougher than the other teams. We wanted to go out and out hit the other teams. And at the end of the day, we were going to have more points than them. And it was just the best feeling because they were number one at the Pac-10 at that point. We beat them to put ourselves at the number one spot. And that's what I was so excited about. That's what we were excited about. group of guys that were willing to battle and fight and uh, you know we believed that we were better than them and we wanted to go out and prove that we were and it was a it was a fight to the finish and it wasn't until late in that game where we hit a run up the middle to seal it. Shaw 
That'll do it and more. Goodbye. Touchdown, Washington. Uh, this is the best feeling because they were number one at the Pac-10 at that point. We beat them to put ourselves at the number one spot. And that's what I was so excited about. That's what we were excited about. Led by that man who has the Pac-10 single game high, 22 carries, 207 yards, 302 yards of passing. I think he'll be doing valet parking retrieval after the game. <laughs> I had no idea what personal uh, accolades I'd, I had done that day until we were actually in the press conference. I'm with Coach Neuheisel. Do you have any idea what you did? And I'm like, shoot, I don't care. We won. How, what, that's a great game. And he goes, no, listen. He goes, you, you, you threw for over 300 yards and you rushed for over 200 yards. No one's ever done that before. And you know, I was like, wow, that's crazy. You know, I didn't, you know, I wasn't thinking personally. I was just thinking, man, that was just a great game. You have to drag the kid off the field. You'd have to carry him off in a stretcher for him to leave the game. Favoring that leg a little you know, bit. We didn't know if he was going to play in that Stanford game. Marcus Tiasasopo is a phenomenal athlete. You know, he and I, I think we're on the same page a lot of times because we weren't necessarily uh, textbook in our approach, but we, we played to win, we played hard, and, and we both like to, uh, to kind of get out there and make things up on the fly. You got to be passionate about what you do, and you know, I love I love football. I love playing, and I especially love playing with those guys, with my teammates. Uh, you know, you work so hard, and uh, you know, you come together, and if you set a goal, and you truly mean it, and you do everything in your power to accomplish that goal for the guy next to you, and you, you hope that they do the same thing for you. So, you know, you work so hard during the week. Saturday's like, that's your day to go let it all out and have fun. And I think that's well, you know, what I brought to the field as a competitor, you know, not, you know, I hope I tried to convey that, you know, to all my teammates and, you know, I, I, I was around a bunch of guys that I think felt the same way. I was so excited that we won and, and, and that's what I think made our group special. Next time on Greatest Moments at Husky Stadium. You want to make sure you, your evaluation system is, is fair. And that's why I got a chance to be the starter, is because I did what I was supposed to do every day in practice. The James Gang arrives and takes Husky fans on a joy ride all the way to Pasadena.